Last week, Ukraine used long-range ATACMS missiles delivered in secret to destroy multiple S-400 systems and much more at the Russian airfield in Zhankoi, occupied Crimea. New York Times reports over 100 such missiles were already delivered to Ukraine before the House vote. The United States finally concluded that Russia must suffer a devastating defeat in Ukraine. More than 1,000 long-range ATACMs with a more than 300 kilometers range allocated for Ukraine are in Europe for over a month already. And Russian propaganda announced wonderful news. Sevastopol, Orel, Lipetsk, Donetsk, Lugansk, Rostov-na-Dono. Это огромная территория нашей страны, до которой украинцы теперь достают. Говорю, теперь, несмотря на то, что американские источники сообщают, что оружие будет поставлено только к концу недели, но мы всякий раз фиксируем, прежде чем объявлять о военной помощи, американцы, как правило, эту помощь доставляют на Украину. Так что исходим мы с того, что все то, что полагается из 61 миллиарда пакета военной помощи, уже находится на территории нашего врага. Tanks with petroleum products caught fire in Omsk, Russia. The volume of each tank is about 200 liters. Reasons for fire are unknown, but the fires in Russian oil facilities are very often in Russia. Можно козловой залезть? Баллоны, кстати, нормально летают. Mass production of Russian Bliat mobiles has begun. The Russian tanks that are modified this way have essentially become APCs for transporting infantry on top of the hull. They can no longer fight as tanks or even IFVs because the gun turret and the crew's view of the battle space is now confined to a 45 degree forward looking arc. Also, you can use older non-upgraded tanks straight out of storage for this purpose, which puts otherwise combat ineffective armor to use without the extensive costs of upgrading them. So why use a tank? Because Russian tanks are somewhat less explodey than Russian APCs and IFVs, and there are a lot of T-62s and other obsolete models sitting around. I'm not sure how well-mounted infantry would fare with a hit on the shell from a cumulative warhead, being killed versus being severely wounded from molten metal in your face, have the same immediate effect on combat effectiveness of infantry, but it should marginally increase survivability. and a bogged-down Blyatmobile near Krasnohorovka, stuffed with electronic warfare. The situation on the Eastern Front is not good for Ukrainians. Months they were left without weapons makes the things very hard right now. The Russian invasion army re-entered Urozhen in southern Donetsk Oblast, eight months after it was liberated by Ukrainian forces. Russian Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov was arrested for two months after a decision was made by the Basmani court. He's facing 15 years in prison for a large-scale bribe. But don't be fooled by the headlines. This corrupt man has been robbing the Russian population with permission from authorities for decades. He is a person belonging to the system. The real reasons behind this arrest are more complex. 
There is now a lot of discussion about the arrest of Deputy Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation, Timur Ivanov, on charges of bribery. This is the second person in the ministry after Shoigu. No matter how funny it may sound for Russia, yes, precisely for bribes. But the detention of Timur Ivanov is a strong blow to Shoigu. Apparently, Shoigu himself did not know about the upcoming arrest, because the day before he held a meeting where Ivanov also took part. It was Shoigu who brought Ivanov to the ministry and covered for him more than once in previous cases. Ivanov's arrest is in no way a fight against corruption. In Russia, everyone steals as much as they can. In the Russian system, each official has a separate folder in the FSB, and when a signal comes from above that a person needs to be processed, they take it off the shelf and put it into action. A person working for the Russian government, even if he has palaces, yachts, and expensive cars, actually does not possess any of this. It does not belong to him and can be taken away at any moment, and he is sent to prison. The reasons why he was removed from his post are not yet clear, but most likely it will be known later. Artur Ivanov was not a military man, although he wore a uniform. He was involved in the construction of military and other facilities. For example, he was responsible for the construction of the Vostochny Cosmodrome, where record amounts were stolen. He was responsible for the construction of the Patriot Park and construction in Maripol, destroyed by the Russians. He held the civil position of acting state councillor of the Russian Federation, first class. In the army, this would correspond to a general's post. That's why there were all these uniforms with medals. His arrest actually indicates that a serious intra-clan struggle has begun in Putin's system. Ivanov's place is very profitable because during construction there are some of the largest kickbacks. Now the struggle for this place will begin, and all the contenders will now rush to compromise and snitch on each other in the fight for this place. Putin created a system like any dictator, where he pits everyone against each other and forces one to fight with another. His task is to ensure that no one can unite so much as to become a threat to his own power. Whether clouds are gathering over Shoigu himself is also difficult to say now. After Prigozhin's rebellion, Putin does not risk introducing new players, relying on old, proven, and loyal people, albeit absolutely useless. In this system, such people are actually allowed almost everything. Steal, send soldiers in batches to their deaths, but the main thing is to remain loyal. But failures at the front may force Putin to make some personnel decisions, so it's now difficult to vouch for Shoigu's safety. But no matter what happens there, it's all for the benefit of Ukraine. Because the Russian system is devouring itself in this way, begins to collapse from the inside, and weakens. And with it, naturally, Putin's power. The list of Russia's problems is only growing every day. Kadyrov is also preparing to kick the bucket. And if the struggle for power begins in Chechnya, it will explode significantly. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.